Okay, in this video, I'm finally going to give you the answers to my special topics 1A videos, preparing st students for the organic chemistry sections of their uh, standardized exams, such as the MCAT, DAT, GRE, PCAT, etc. Let's take a look at the lineup. In this first question, I ask you which of the following are considered terminal functional groups? The correct answer is D. If you want to know why, I'll tell you right now. Okay, to answer this question, we have to remember what each of these functional groups looks like. Let's begin by looking at ketones. Ketones, you might remember, have the generic structure R, bonded to a carbon, doubly bonded to an oxygen, stuck to another R, where each R group represents a hydrocarbon chain. In other words, we could have example ketones like this. This would be methyl ethyl ketone. Carboxylic acids have the generic structure that looks like this, where once again, the R represents any hydrocarbon chain. An example carboxylic acid would be propanoic acid, which has this structure. Aldehydes look like this, where R represents, once again, any hydrocarbon chain. We can replace that with a specific example, the example shown here, which is a three carbon aldehyde called propanol. The question asks us which of these functional groups is a terminal functional group. Remember, a terminal functional group is one that occurs at the terminus or at the end of a chain. As we look at our ketone, let's ask ourselves, does that functional group, this carbon-oxygen double bond, occur at the end of the carbon chain? You can see clearly that it does not. In fact, I can have ketones of various lengths, and in all of the cases, that carbon-oxygen double bond occurs somewhere in the middle. What about a carboxylic acid? By virtue of the way a carboxylic acid is, it's going to have to occur at the end of a carbon chain. It is a terminal functional group. The same thing occurs with an aldehyde. Thus, the correct answer for this problem is both B and C. In the second question, we're asked what the correct structure is for this IUPAC name. The correct answer is C. If you want to know why, Stay tuned right now. Another exciting IUPAC problem. Okay, look, when doing an IUPAC problem, you have to remember that the way all of these names are organized is we have the parent chain written at the end of the name, and then all of the substituents written here at the first part of the name. What that means is this. When I do one of these problems, I always look at the end and try to identify what the parent chain is and then work my way backwards. Looking at this one, this is gonna be the parent chain, cyclopentane. What is a cyclopentane? Well, a pentane is a carbon chain that has five carbons and cyclo implies that it's a ring. So cyclopentane is a five carbon ring. I'll go ahead and draw that right here. It kinda looks like home plate on a baseball field. Now, the next thing that we're gonna do is place all the substituents in their proper locations. The way to start is to go ahead and arbitrarily number all of my atoms in the ring. Now, since I have a cyclopentane sitting there with nothing on it, it doesn't matter really where I start. I'm going to go ahead and start up top. I'll go one and I'll go clockwise, two, three, four, five. Now we're going to identify the substituents and put them in place. Now keep in mind one thing. The prefix trans tells us that uh, the two substituents that are bound to the cyclopentane ring have to be pointing in opposite directions from each other, one up and one down. What that means is that when I draw these things on, I'm not going to draw an up or a down, a wedgie or a dashie, until I'm all done identifying what the substituents are and where they go. You can see that at position one on my cyclopentane ring, I have an ethoxy group. What in the world is an ethoxy group? An ethoxy group is an ethyl that is bonded to an oxygen. So I'm gonna have an ethoxy group that is an oxygen stuck to an ethyl group dangling off of carbon one. On carbon two, I have a propoxy group. What's a propoxy group? Well, it's a propyl chain bonded to an oxygen. So dangling off of carbon two, I've got, an apro I've got a propoxy group. Now, the prefix trans tells me how these two groups are oriented three-dimensionally with respect to each other. They must be pointing in opposite directions. That is, one of them is going to be pointing up, and the other one will be pointed down. I've indicated that by drawing a wedgie on one and a dashie on the other. 
Now one thing I want to point out is this. You could draw the opposite isomer, that is, the ethoxy group with a dash E and the propoxy group with a wedgie. Yes, I did say wedgie. One up and one down, like that. These two molecules are both trans 1-ethoxy 2-propoxy cyclopentane. You'll notice that they are, of course, stereoisomers of each other. In fact, these are an antimers of each other, just so you know. But they are both completely correct answers.